put so much at our fingertips. Writing, pictures, music, video, games, even software. And digital technology makes it easier than ever to cut, paste, copy, share, mash up, reuse, and republish whatever we find. As creators and internet users, we should know what copyright allows so we can be responsible citizens online. Okay, so what do I need to know? When you create something, you get to decide who can make copies, distribute copies, display or perform the work in public, and make spin-offs. It turned out that he was a wizard. Woo! So they gave him a wand. Thank you! And an owl called Hedwig. Twitchwoo! Whoa, what was that? Harry Potter, but not Harry Potter? But I thought Harry Potter was copyrighted. So what are these crazies doing to it? Great point! Copyright is not an absolute right. It has some important limitations. If you like being creative and sharing creative work, like the Potted Potter creators, you'll want to know about these limitations. The first thing you'll need to know is that copyright doesn't cover everything. Ideas and facts are free for everyone to use and share. So, the sky is blue. Nicki Minaj has green hair today. Really? I thought it was pink. Either way, facts do not get copyright protection. Facts belong to everyone. Copyright only protects your particular expression of fact. Same thing with ideas. This means if you make a movie, copyright protects the artwork, images, soundtrack, lyrics, script, but not the ideas or the facts in the movie. If you learn some new facts or ideas watching a movie, you're free to use or repeat those facts or ideas as you see fit. Okay, let's say I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, which I am of course and I write my own story about a kid who finds out he has magical powers, and his special talents will help him save his world from an evil wizard. Would that be copyright infringement? Nope, the idea of wizards having magical powers is not protected by copyright. And thank goodness, or Harry Potter never could have been written. Tolkien already did it back in 1949, and he didn't invent the idea either. Magical wizard stories go back a long way. However, if I write a story about a boy who lives under the stairs and he gets invited to Hogwarts when he turns 11, and maybe his name is Perry Hotter, that would be a problem, because it takes too many of the unique elements of Harry Potter, and that story is protected by copyright. Facts and ideas also include non-creative lists of information, such as phone numbers, addresses, and map information. It's good for society to have lots and lots of facts and ideas that we're all free to use. Another thing that copyright doesn't cover is government documents, like websites, photos, and videos. Like facts and ideas, these are free to copy for everyone. So far, we've learned that copyright gives a lot of protection to creative work, but it has limitations. Copyright does not cover facts and ideas or government documents. But what about all the creative work out there that is protected by copyright? Like new songs and movies? Do I always need permission before I can reuse someone else's creative work? Sometimes you don't. There's this really important part of copyright called fair use. It allows us to use copyrighted work in limited ways that are still fair to the artist. I guess that's why it's called fair use. Fair use shows up in a lot of news reporting, commentary, education, and in new creative works that use others' work in entirely new ways. Do you want some exposition? Some information through a song? Quoting from a book or showing a movie excerpt as part of a review is fair use. Recording a TV show on a DVR so you can watch it later is fair use. Fair use is decided on a case-by-case -case basis using a four-factor legal test. The four factors are weighed together to decide if you have a fair use or not. Number one is the purpose and character of your use. If your use is for commentary, news reporting, criticism, or education, then that favors fair use. For example, using a copyrighted song in a school project for a real educational purpose that's usually a fair use. However, if you take your school project and want to publish it online, then you have more to consider. Like how much of the song have you used, and will it hurt the market by being a substitute for the original? One key question that the courts like to ask regarding this first factor is, has the material you've taken from the original work been transformed by adding new expression or meaning? So it becomes part of a genuinely new work, rather than just repackaging the original. Next, think about the original you want to use. How creative is it? 
Is it highly creative or just a bunch of info? The more creative and original it is, the stronger the copyright protections are. Oh, I get it. Like, Harry Potter is super creative, but a video of facts about fungi? Not so much. Right! Next ask, how much have you used? Did I use more than was necessary to make my point? Did I take the heart of the thing? These will hurt your fair use claim. Lastly ask, could my use of this work replace the original in the marketplace? Could it undermine the creator's ability to sell or make money from the work? For example, if I take a whole movie and add a minute of commentary to the beginning of the film to say, this is a great movie, I think everyone should see it, let's watch, and then I copy the whole movie to my short commentary and upload it to my blog, that is not a fair use. Just consider the factors we discussed. It's not highly new and original. It used the whole thing, not a small portion. And because the whole thing is there, it would be able to substitute for the original in the marketplace. On the other hand, if I make a video of me explaining why I think it's such a great movie, a genuine commentary, and I show only a short clip, for example, to illustrate a strong protagonist, that would be a fair use. Here's a real life example. The makers of a movie biography about the famous heavyweight boxer, Muhammad Ali, did something similar. They used a short clip, just 41 seconds, from one of his boxing matches in their film. When the owner of the footage objected, a court ruled that it was fair use because the amount of footage was small, and reusing it in this way wouldn't affect the owner's market. Remember, the four factors have to be considered together to decide if your use is a fair use and not just illegally copying someone else's work. So that's fair use. It means that sometimes you can use a copyrighted work without the author's permission, but you do have to think carefully about things like why you're using it, how much you use, and whether your use could hurt the sales of the work. Fair use isn't the only limitation on copyright. Another one is time. Creators' rights last a long time, but they don't last forever. Eventually, all creative work falls into the public domain when the copyright expires. Any work of art, story, movie, novel, or photograph that is so old that it's no longer protected under copyright law is in the public domain and free to be used by the public. That's all of us. In the U.S., generally, the public domain includes any work published more than 95 years ago. But some newer works may already be in the public domain as well. There's so much creativity all around us. Remember, the goal of copyright is to encourage more creative work. So our creations are protected, but those protections have important limitations. And the point of these limitations is to make sure you can be inspired by, discuss and criticize, or even build upon the creative work that has come before. And that's good for creativity all around. So what are you going to create next?